When I, I was being told the last year that I'd been assigned to the Caribbean Princess for this uh, Panama Canal, I was so excited and um, I have to thank you, the company, to have choose me as uh, the captain to go through Panama Canal as uh, this will be the largest uh, cruise ship, uh, will be the new Panamax uh, uh, ship going through the new locks uh, for Panama. So it's very exciting and uh, it's an honor to be the captain of the ship. I will wake up uh, very early in the morning. Just, uh, I know usually in, with uh, my experience uh, uh, through Panama Canal will be a busy area to approach the area. So we'll be early on the bridge. We know already what we expect and what to do. And then uh, we enter, we will enter the Cristobal breakwater. It's where the, everything starts to happen at that point. We will have authority one pilot coming on board, uh, clearance, uh, and uh, everybody needs to board the ship. We will not move, uh, we will move uh, actually very, very slow, or there is a chance as well that uh, we drop uh, the anchor according with what uh, the Panamanian authority decide, hopefully not uh, dropping anchor, but uh, just a slow motion. Until the ship is clear, we are not uh, able to proceed uh, towards uh, the locks. So, and this uh, can be long or short procedure. Being uh, the first uh, transit, uh, I presume that uh, will be a little bit longer than the usual uh, transit. Starting from the second uh, passenger, everything will be much, much easier. So the whole day starts basically at five o'clock in the morning when we're up ready to get off the ship onto, onto a small boat and take us to shoreside. The, the whole day, the whole day, the way we film it and the way it's done, it's like a story. It has a beginning, it has a middle, and it has an end. And for us to get off first thing in the morning at five o'clock is just the beginning of the story. No, I'm not worried uh, because uh, all the information available to me are clear. I know exactly what uh, I'm going to expect. I know the way that uh, we, were work we will work with the pilots and the tugboats, so I do not expect uh, any, any surprise because we know the procedures and we are ready for the transit. As well, uh, the bridge team has already been briefed then uh, we are going to brief again, uh, to, to meet again with all the officers and uh, go step by step uh, through each uh, procedures in order that uh, we are all on the same uh, page uh, and uh, there is no surprise. So it's all about the uh, planning as well uh, from our side. Everybody has to know what to do, how to do it and when to do it. So as we arrive in the locks, the sun's just rising and the ship's ready to come in. We had to get our cameras dehumidified because obviously it's very humid here in Panama. Once we got already, we have five or six people shooting the locks. So we have two people in the helicopter, and then we have three of us down below, and then we have our driver that stays with us and takes us all through the locks and from A to B, from Cristobal over to the Agua Clara and Agua Clara to Gatun 
to back to Agua Clara and then back to Cristobal again. So it's a big work up for the day. I'm often asked, does it ever get old going through the canal time after time? And the answer is no, because there's always some activity going on. Always activity on the shore, both at the locks, either overhead with aircraft taking a look at it, military vessels going through, big cargo ships that we never see in our own hometowns. That's what keeps it interesting today. The canal is one great big compendium of facts, figures, and numbers. How long is it? 51 miles. How deep is the canal? How wide is the canal? How long has it been operating as a canal? All these numbers add together and make for an interesting transit for those that haven't been through the project before. I've actually been asked, what's it all about? What's it for? Why is it here? It has to do with shipping and global activity and changing the travel patterns of cruise ships as well as cargo vessels. Considering that the Caribbean Princess is 290 meters, which is a 950 feet long, 36 meters wide, which is a 118 feet width wider, the new Panama Canal has the width of 55 meters, which equate to 180 feet wide for 427 meters long, which is 1,400 feet long. So when the old canal, the, ship, the old ships, the coral class, the sun class, we were very tight inside the locks. This time we have an extra 450 feet in the length and an extra 30 feet uh, on the side. So there is a less uh, stress uh, to keep uh, the ship uh, off the walls, so much wider uh, the chamber and uh, make us a little bit more comfortable. What's exciting about the new locks is the magnitude, how big they really are. With our ship, we're 12 feet 
too wide to go through the original locks. So that's what makes this project unique. But uh, until we're actually in the locks and taking a look at things and seeing the activity going on, that's when you'll get the feeling of, wow, this is really something. Actually seeing something like the Caribbean Princess come in through the Aguaclara locks and see the size of it when it first comes in, because obviously it's whichever level it comes in at, especially when it's coming back from the opposite direction, from the Gatun Lake, it's really high, it's massive. It's the size of the ship that you'd always know. It's like being on water level. And as you see the whole ship just sink down to like deck seven and lose the hole from one to five, uh, one to seven, it's amazing. It's just an amazing thing to see how water and how gravity works. We have to capture the ship with lots of different perspectives, you know, to give you a perspective because what you see from the ship is one dimensional. And we're trying to give you what we call a second dimension and a third dimension from the helicopter. So we have all three perspectives all in one DVD. But this is a great taste of what the canal is all about, going through the brand new locks and being the first to do it. It's a big deal. We want to make sure that every passenger is going to enjoy the the passage uh, and uh, so there are uh, all the hotel staff around to make sure that uh, we can supply all the needs uh, of, uh, of uh, our guests. It will be very hot so I'm sure that uh, the, the waters, the drinks uh, are always uh, ready available for them. What you'll find interesting is the activity going on in front and back of the ship with tugboats guiding us through. No more locomotives, only tugboats are used. The major difference that uh, everybody is going to notice uh, is that the new Panama Canal locks uh, have uh, not uh, the mules. So before we were uh, making fast uh, six mules, three on each side of the ship. Now there are no more mules, instead we have two tugboats. One tugboat will be fast on the forward part and the second one will be on the aft part of the ship. So the locks door are not anymore like a regular door opening and closing, but are sliding doors. So the system is completely new and has been designed as well to be faster. Previously, I was on ships that used to do the, the Panamex ships. They used to go through the old locks of uh, Gatun Lake, Miraflores, Pedro Miguel. And obviously, coming to these new locks, the difference between the old locks and the new locks is almost to me like the old car factories. When you had the car factories, you had that production line and you had people manually riveting, putting doors on and so forth. You had hundreds and hundreds of people working in that factory. And now factories are run by robotics, they're run by computers, and it's run by robots. That's pretty much what we found in Agriclara. There's hardly anybody working on, on the actual key side, actually on the locks themselves. Everything is all computerized. There's maybe 70 people maximum, where on the old locks, you're talking hundreds and hundreds of people all doing work here. It's very sparse. enough tenacity here 
to accommodate any ship in the future. I don't think we're going to be seeing another canal in Central America. So Panama has taken the lead. They took this lead 20 years ago when they made the decision to do it, and now they have. And now about 17 cruise ships will use the new locks. A total of 230 cruise ships will do the canal, old locks and new. I mean, for me, just coming through the Agricola Locks, A, you're making history, you know? There's only been one other cruise ship to actually go through the Agricola Locks. So for us to be the second one, and actually the biggest cruise ship, so we are the biggest cruise ship to ever go Agricola, and the very first princess ship, you know, for you on board to, to go through this, on this experience, on this inaugural season, is a fantastic thing to happen to you. Well, I hope uh, the guests on board, uh, they, they are going to keep uh, forever uh, this uh, unique experience, first of all. Being the first to go through uh, Panama Can the new Panama Canal, I should say, with uh, this large ship, and uh, can uh, pass uh, to the friends, uh, to the family, to the social media as well, the, the various blog, uh, their experience, uh, and um, the other, other uh, guests, other uh, passengers, new passengers, uh, reading and uh, hear the experience uh, that they got, uh, make them uh, come on board uh, and try themselves uh, the emotion that they can live uh, uh, in each of them. So it's a very big event, uh, not only for Princess, which is very exciting for Princess, of course, but also for Panama, it's really a big uh, excitement uh, to have a very large ship uh, going through uh, the canal. Why don't we wait here now? That day for me will be very intense day and uh, probably I will not realize until uh, the ship is uh, docked uh, in the afternoon in Cristobal because it will be very intense, uh, the arrival, uh, the transit uh, and the transit back to the uh, ocean. But I, I think uh, during the night uh, and the day after, I will realize exactly what has been done. So it will be, that will be the emotion. Why don't we wait here? I just want to stay here. Why don't we wait here?
Why don't we?